Alright 4-H'ers, we're going to cover the order Hemiptera and we're going to look um, in this presentation at the suborder Heteroptera. So Hemiptera is grouped into, it's, there's a whole lot of insects in this order Hemiptera, but they're grouped into three different things called suborders. So Hemiptera is giant, but to categorize them easier, they're grouped into three other groups. Intermediates and seniors, I would know the difference between Heteroptera and the other two groups that we're going to talk about. Juniors is probably isn't going to be seen on your exam, but definitely for seniors you need to know it. And intermediates, I wouldn't be surprised if you see this on an, on an exam. And if you decide to go on to the state contest, absolutely you'll probably see this on the exam. So let's get started with just the Heteroptera group. And we're going to look only at the orders that juniors need to know, intermediates, and seniors. So the ones that everybody needs to know, there's about seven um, of them that juniors, also to include intermediates and seniors, need to know. The first one is um, the back swimmer. I would know about, first of all, I would know about all hemipterans, that they all have the piercing and sucking mouth parts, parts or hostile mouth parts. I would also know that everybody in hemiptera has um, an incomplete life cycle or their hemimetabolis. So back swimmers of this hemiptera group are considered beneficial. What's unique about these guys is that they swim upside down and the body is darker on the top than it is below so that predators, when they look up, they blend in and they can't tell that it's an insect. So their coloration and the fact that they swim upside down is an adaptation. Their, their body is kind of boat shaped. If you look at them, doesn't it kind of look a little bit like a boat? Like the nose of the boat is their tail end, right? And this is, would be the back of the boat. They have legs that are modified for swimming, and if you look at them on their back, those hind legs are really, really long. And so when you see it up here, those aren't the front legs, those are actually the hind legs, and they're meant to push down far so that it can propel it in the water. Um, uh, one thing that I would know about hemipterans, especially in this heteroptera group, is that they all kind of have this triangle. So hemiptera means, hemi means half, and terra means wing. And hemipterans have half of the wing is hard and the other half is, is membranous or soft. And so when um, the hemipterans fold their wings over their body, they leave this little triangle. So imagine if you have like a blanket over your back and you fold it over across, you're gonna leave a little triangle where your chest is. That's kind of how hemipterans are with their wings on the back. So. Let's say that you have no idea what this thing is, but you can kind of see that there's this little triangle that's been formed. Hopefully that will help you know that it's a hemiptera. Um, bed bugs, however, are um, in this hemiptera group, the heteroptera group, but they don't have wings. Bed bugs don't need wings. They need to just be able to crawl and find um, their predators. If you think about fleas, um, ticks, if you think about other animals that suck blood, they probably, they usually don't have wings. The wings just would get in the way. Lice, so with insects, it's lice and fleas. They probably had wings at one point in their life, um, but they've de-evolved to have, to no longer have wings, or they've adapted to have no wings so that they are able to squeeze and cram into tight places and they don't get caught on things. Um, so bed bugs use humans as a host. Um, Let's see, for that back swimmer, where you would find them would be a pond, but bed bugs are going to use humans as their host. That's what they feed on. You find them on mattresses and wherever humans are going to sleep. They're definitely not a pest, but they are not known to transmit any diseases at this time. And we call them hitchhikers because we pick them up. You take a bag to a friend's house, they crawl onto your backpack, you take it home, and you end up getting them at your house. You um, pick up a library book at the library, and the person who had it before you had bed bugs. They put their bed, their book on the nightstand and bed bugs crawled into the book, goes onto the library shelf, spreads to other books. You get a new book at the library. You picked them up because they hitchhiked. Bed bugs used to be a senior only insect. So for juniors this year, this is new for you guys that you need, that you need to know bed bugs. The next one to know is this giant water bug. Giant water bugs are very, very big. Um, you can kind of see the triangle on its back right there, right? These are also found around water, water in ponds. They're really highly attracted to light, so we see them a lot of times at gas stations and movie theaters that are close to some sort of body of water. Um, baseball fields, football fields that have the lights on all the time. They can be very large or they can be a little bit smaller. 
They eat insects and other fish. They are a predator. They're considered beneficial. And they have interesting legs. They have both raptorial legs. The front legs are meant to reach out and grasp their prey. And then their hind legs are natatorial, meaning that they use it for swimming. These guys will bite you if you pick them up underneath. They have very short piercing and sucking mouth parts to stab into their prey so they can consume it. Our next Hemiptera in the group Heteroptera is the green stink bug. This is the guy that just looks like a stink bug to everybody, but know that we are going to call it on the contest the green stink bug. You won't get full credit if you just say stink bug. Um, their host is going to be uh, weeds, but you'd also find them in gardens and fields and crops and on the roadside in flowers. They feed on these plants, but they prefer to spend most of their time in weeds because that's where they like to lay their eggs. So the host for you guys to know would be weeds, and they are definitely considered a pest, piercing and sucking mouth parts. Here's their triangle, pretty good sized triangle right there. The other thing that I noticed with hemipterans is that the, where the soft parts of the wings overlap, you kind of have a different color right there. So I, I look at that and that tells me I have hemiptera. Um, and then, not quite our last one, but close to it, we have the harlequin bugs. Harlequin bugs kind of look like a ladybug. They're kind of a pretty bug. They're kind of um, orange or reddish in color with black markings on them. They are a type of stink bug, just like the green stink bug, and you can really see the different color triangle right there, right? Plus the different color where those soft wings overlap. These are definitely a pest, and they're a pest in a type of crop called cold crops. Cold crops are kind of our cold weather crops, broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, some spinach, um, cabbage, those are all considered coal crops. And so they're a major pest in, in coal crops, so we don't like them very much. And then you also need to know squash bugs. So um, where do you think you would find a squash bug? The host is going to be squash, but we also see them on other things that are related to squash. These guys have the piercing and sucking mouth parts that they jab into the plant and suck the juices out. Um, so harlequin bugs are pretty easy to identify. Squash bugs just kind of look like a brown bug. They do have some, like, a little bit of checkered pattern on their back, but, but when you see them in real life, they just kind of look like big, they look like brown stink bugs, pretty much. In this picture, you can see that they definitely are hemimetabolists, right? There's little tiny babies that have probably just hatched here and there. There's some that are a little bit larger that have molted a few times. Looks like this one next time it molts will probably be an adult and then you have adults mixed in here. So they don't have a true larva or a pupa. They're hemimetabolous. They have an incomplete life cycle. The last hemiptera in the heteroptera group that our juniors, intermediates, and seniors all need to know is the toad bug. Toad bugs are very, very small, only about half an inch, and if you look at them, their eyeballs make them look like they're a toad or a frog. They're also kind of warty, so some people will see them and mistake them actually for a toad until you look closely like them, at them. Not only that, but they jump like a toad does. So they act like a toad, they look like a toad. And where you would find them would be on rocky shores, um, lakes, or ponds. Now, what if you're asked on the contest, name me two hemiptera that are aquatic. Well, we've talked about, let's see, the giant water bug and the back swimmer for our juniors. A toad bug isn't really found in the water, it's a found, found along the shoreline. So if you put toad bug down as an aquatic hemipteran, you probably wouldn't get full credit for that because they don't technically live totally in the water. So we're going to end this presentation with that. These are all of the hemipteran in the heteroptera group that only, that everybody needs to know. So juniors, after this one, you don't have to watch any of the other heteroptera presentations. But you do have insects in the Akinorinka and the Steiner, Sternorinka group that you do have to know. So stay tuned for more information on more hemiptera. And intermediates and seniors, come back to watch some of the other presentations on the insects that you guys need to know as more advanced 4-H'ers.